Stan Jabalisco here from the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America, where, if the weather forecast is to be believed, within 48 hours, this scene will be pasted with white. This is the view off my deck of the town of Lead, L-E-A-D, South Dakota. Looking more or less southeast, which is a clear shot to South America. That's a good thing on 20 meters. The ham radio band, 14 megahertz. This is a vertical, as you can see, a plain vertical antenna consisting of sections of aluminum tubing that telescope directly into one another. I obtained these from Texas Towers. They sell some really great tubing. It's a 22 foot tall antenna. Well, it, a quarter of a wavelength on 14 megahertz, as you may know, is not 22 feet, but more like 16 feet. However, at the base of this antenna, I have two 100 picofarad capacitors connected in series to make a 50 picofarad capacitor. And uh, as you can see, they are well protected against the snow and ice that will soon be on this deck if nature has her presumed way. Uh, the uh, base of this antenna I have to clear out a little bit when it snows, but it, it seems to work pretty much the same way. Uh, underneath the deck I have several radials uh, which uh, provide the radio frequency ground for this antenna. So it is a capacitively loaded vertical antenna and the current node therefore rather than appearing right at the base appears a few feet above the base. I guess um, 22 minus 16 probably about six feet above the base so right about here. That also raises the uh, impedance at the base point a little bit. Theoretically for a ground plane antenna with a quarter wavelength radiating element the and uh, horizontal radials representing a perfect ground you'd get about 37 ohms, 36 and a half ohms of radiation resistance and no reactants. So you'd have an SWR of somewhere on the order of 1.5 Thereabouts. If you <clears throat> lengthen the antenna slightly like this and capacitively load it, you tend to raise that radiation resistance. So this antenna has a uh, standing wave ratio of just about exactly 1 to 1 at 14 megahertz. And it, this also, for some reason, seems to broaden the bandwidth a little bit. So it's never more than about 1.3 all the way across the entire 20 meter band. I operate in the CW part of the band uh, so I've tuned this antenna uh, for that part of the band but but really uh, in, in regards to standing wave ratio loss in the feed line of any antenna if your standing wave ratio at the base point is 2 to 1 or less you're not going to suffer a significant amount of loss that's uh, something that a lot of people don't know. They, they uh, obsess over having a perfectly flat one-to-one -one standing wave ratio, but really, uh, for most uh, intents and purposes, it's good enough if it's two-to-one or less. And in a lot of cases at the lower frequencies, even three or four-to-one is, is okay, although uh, most transmitters these days don't like a standing wave ratio of more than two to one. In any case, that is the antenna system here at Whiskey One Golf Victor, deck mounted antenna. Uh, some other little features of this deck. 
There are the deck lights which I had to replace. Oh, you can only see one of them really very well. There's the other one. Look at them close up. These things are built to withstand the assault of ice, which results from ice dam build up on the roof. It alternately thaws and freezes and thaws and freezes all winter long around here. It had gutters at one time along here in the roof, but <clears throat> the ice destroyed them. It's a, it's a well-made roof, though. The ice has not gotten up there and destroyed the, the roof. But in the wintertime, uh, after a big snow, this, uh, these eaves here have icicles that can hang all the way, almost all the way down to the deck. And also in the backyard, same thing. I call this uh, Dr. Zhivago house during that time of the year. Inside this little window, I don't know if you can see it, crunch, crunch, go the leaves on the deck. Well, I don't know if you can see anything in there. That is the workstation from which I have created a number of videos. You recognize the eight ball. I'm behind the eight ball in my work, so that is figuratively demonstrated there. So, maybe if we get a really cool looking view out here after the, after the next, after the first winter storm of the year, October 2nd, 2012, and we're talking about winter storms already. Oh my, Stan Jibalisco from South Dakota Territory, United States of America, saying, Aloha.